So a lot of times on my Patreon page, I'll have new students who are just starting out oil painting message me and be like, hey, I'm just starting out oil painting. Like, where do you suggest I start? Like, what should I paint first? What's an easy uh, painting tutorial to do? And I always direct them to one of my simple, small still life studies. I feel like these are so good and so valuable to people just starting out. I even put one in my foundations of oil painting course. Like one of the first paint alongs is a small little study of a lemon you do before doing the final big uh, still life painting of the lemon. I suggest these because everything you need to know about oil painting can be found in these small little six by eight inch 45 minute still life studies. I know that's a big claim to make, but I will prove that by the end of this video. Now I know you're probably thinking, you're thinking like, oh, still life, that sounds kind of boring and, and lame and I don't want to do that, it doesn't sound very exciting. Well, if that's what you think, then you obviously haven't seen oil painters like these who paint still lifes so good and so interesting, it's scary. I mean, I don't understand how they can be this good. Also, if you think that, I'd like to remind you what I've said in a lot of other videos of mine, which is don't be so concerned with what you paint as much as how you paint. I paint all different sorts of subjects, still lives, portraits, landscapes, pretty much anything. And I find it very helpful for many reasons, but you know, I don't really get interested exactly in certain subject matter as much as certain qualities that are shared amongst many different subjects. Things like light and shadow shapes and patterns, uh, value patterns, compositions, color arrangements, things that I can find in any subject matter so I can get interested and excited about painting all different types of things. Now let's dive a little deeper into these uh, painting tutorials that I suggest because it's a lot more than just the subject matter. First, the size is very important. You always suggest doing these pretty small, like around six by eight inches. And for those of you that use the metric system and don't know what an inch looks like, this is six by eight inches. Now working on a small space like this is gonna help you cover a lot of area very quickly, especially when you're using a big brush. I always recommend using a bigger brush than you think you need. This is gonna help you develop the habit of seeing the big shapes and not getting into detail too quickly. What do I mean by seeing the big shapes first? I mean squinting your eyes and getting rid of detail. I always say when I'm painting something, I think about it as if I'm painting it with cut out paper. That I have to cut out paper and put it down and as I progress, I add more cutouts on top of that to identify smaller and smaller shapes. If you want more in-depth information on this, I've made a whole video about that. I'll put a link to that right here. Also, when you're working this small, it's gonna help you use the correct amount of paint. People starting out seem to always be very timid when it comes to using paint. And we wanna break that habit right from the start. You don't wanna be afraid of the paint. You wanna be putting out a good amount of paint on your palette and using a lot of paint on your canvas. In one of my favorite oil painting books, Landscape Painting Inside and Out by Kevin McPherson, I'll put a link to that in the description below and where you can get it. He explains the importance of using a lot of paint by having this exercise in there for beginners where you squirt out entire tubes of paint onto your palette to do a painting on a nine by 12 panel using all the paint in the tubes. Yes, this is an excessive and rather expensive exercise, but it drives home the point of how important it is to be using enough paint and to understand how oil paint behaves on a canvas and how in a lot of ways it's easier to move the paint and manipulate it on the canvas when it's really thick opposed to really thin. Okay, let's talk about time because time is very important when it comes to practicing. You don't wanna be wasting your time practicing things that aren't gonna show results. And I always suggest when you're starting out painting to paint a lot of shorter paintings. The last thing you wanna do is get stuck painting on big canvases, complex subjects, being on a painting for weeks and weeks, and it starts going south and now you're less motivated to paint. Honestly, most of the things that you're gonna learn from doing a painting are pretty much gonna be learned during the beginning stages of the painting. Yes, I could paint these tomatoes on a bigger canvas and really push it a lot further than I did and break out a smaller brush and really get fine and detailed here. But at that point, I'm pretty much just zeroing in on my reference and just matching what I'm seeing on my reference, which honestly isn't that difficult. It's not a very hard thing to do or to understand. But learning how to establish form and value and color and light sources, now that's a different story. Those things can take some time to understand and to get the hang of and you wanna get as much practice doing those things as possible. 
Okay, since those things are gonna take some practice, let's talk about them. Let's talk about form. You're not gonna want the subjects that you're painting to look flat. You're gonna want them to look three-dimensional and have form, and you're gonna do that by using values and shapes. I actually just made a whole video on portrait painting and how to get more form out of your portraits by utilizing values and shapes. Being able to identify the correct shapes and values of those shapes, it's what's going to create realistic form in your subject matter. So think about it, if you can't translate good form with a simple still life study, how are you gonna be able to do it with a complex portrait? All right, next is value, and value is how light or dark a color is. I always say that value does all the work, but color gets all the credit. You can have a painting and the colors be completely off, but the values are right and the painting works great. You try and reverse that, the painting is not gonna work great. I always say no matter what colors you're using in your painting, you should be able to take a picture of that painting and put it in black and white and it still works. That is what values are. In one of the tutorials on my Patreon where I paint this app, will actually do a quick rough little underpainting, mainly to get the values correct. I use a wash of brown paint to just kind of figure out you know, what's darker and what's lighter. This is why a lot of painters do use underpaintings. And some will even, you know, wipe off paint with a paper towel with some paint thinner for the brightest highlights. Uh, they'll get the paint really dark for the darkest darks. And an underpainting can act as a roadmap for your values through the painting and help keep you on track. And values are important in anything that you paint. Like take landscapes, for example, very important. There's the value planes of a landscape. A lot of times in a landscape, your sky is going to be your lightest value, followed by your ground plane. That ground plane is going to be slightly darker than your sky. And then any slanted planes like mountains or hills are going to be a little bit darker. And your darkest value is going to be any upright object, things like trees, uh, bushes, houses, people, things like that. So again, if you struggle with values with a simple little still life study, you're going to struggle even more when you go to try and paint a landscape. All right, now color. Color can be a very tricky thing to kind of wrap your mind around and, and get a handle on. You see a bunch of different painters with different palettes using different colors, but having a simple subject like these little still life studies, you're working with a one color object so you can really zero in and focus in on how to darken that one color, how to lighten that one color, how to desaturate color, how to saturate or desaturate color, understanding color complements. Now, if you struggle with color a lot, I'm gonna do you a big favor here and I'm gonna give you access to the color mixing video from my Foundations of Oil Painting course. In there, I'll break color mixing down, showing you how I mix any color from the primaries and white. And again, that's directly from my Foundations of Oil Painting course. You're getting a free video from the course. The link to get that is in the description below. Okay, and light sources. Again, since you're gonna be dealing with just one object, it's gonna be a lot easier to identify the light sources, which are gonna help you identify the planes. And identifying the planes is also gonna help you identify the light sources. So the change in direction on the surface of an object is what creates a plane. And the change in planes is gonna change and how it catches light. So in this lemon example from my course, you can see the bottom of the lemon is facing down towards the ground, which is actually getting some of that reflected orange light that's bouncing up off from the ground. You don't see a lot of that orange light on top because that's a different plane facing a different direction. Same example here with the apple. This plane on the left is catching, you know, some cooler reflected light from a window, whereas this other plane on the right is catching the direct warm light source hitting the apple. Now understanding light sources and planes is huge when it comes to painting portraits because you have different planes of the face catching different light understanding the structure of the face so getting a grip on a simple subject first is going to be a lot better and help you transition into being able to paint more complex subjects like portraits this is also in landscapes too you have a tree it's getting direct light shining on the top of the tree maybe it's getting some reflected warmer light coming up from the bottom so as you can see, doing these simple still life studies is so helpful. And I really don't think you're ever too good to go back to these. Like whenever I go back to these for a tutorial, I always learn something new. So if you're just starting out, I highly suggest trying a simple still life painting like one of these. It's just gonna really help you, uh, it's gonna help you identify the key aspects of oil painting, what's important to know, what's gonna help make your painting work. It's also gonna help you build momentum. You're not gonna feel as overwhelmed as if you were gonna try and do a portrait or a landscape. And even if you are further along with painting and you are painting portraits and landscapes and stuff, a lot of times it helps if you hit a plateau, if you're stuck, 
to just go back and paint something really simple and to kind of reconnect with the fundamentals and what really makes a painting work. A lot of times when I do that, it, it really shakes things loose and kind of gets me to see things from a different perspective and come back to my portraiture or landscapes fresher and able to do better work. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Again, my Foundations of Oil Painting course is listed in the description below. Also down there's a link to my Patreon page if you're looking for full painting video tutorials. If you want to see what I am painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting.